So there's the distributor. I'm going to take a couple things out of off first to get them out of the way. Uh, bolt for an eye that was used to hoist the engine. short socket. I might be able to. I'm going to get the short socket. Uh, but th those two things hold the shielding that was used to shield for radio interference. So it looks like I can probably get one of these shields out of the way with the power ratchet. The other one though, it's still too big, unfortunately. So, pretty sure that the manual ratchet will fit in there. If not, I'll use a box end wrench. Now, if you were doing this on an engine that you if you're taking the distributor out. If you're doing it on an engine where you're not going to destroy anything, the uh, best way is to get number one cylinder to top dead center and then take the cap off of the distributor, see where the rotor's pointing. And that way when you put it back together, you can drop it back in in the same way same position you'll be somewhat close on timing probably close enough for it to start and then you can time it now oh, what the heck I'll show you what I'm talking about on that shut the camera off for a second and get a screwdriver and they say a picture's worth a thousand words a video is even worth more so there's four screws that you just push down and turn to unlock the distributor cap from the distributor and depending on which one it is uh, you may have to go one direction or the other. They're not consistent, but that's all there is to taking the distributor cap off. And this is what you want to make note of is which way that's pointing. And then don't turn the engine over while you have the distributor out. And you can drop it back in pretty easily with that messing things up. So to get the distributor off, there's a hold down clamp here. It's a 9 16 bolt. By the way, I forgot to mention that um, carburetor bolts were half inch head. And again, this is the 9 16 head, not, not the size of the bolt, because I tend to talk in terms of the wrenches that you need. Okay, there's a little clamp down here that's held on by that bolt. And you need to get it. Actually, it's, it's far enough back that I can just pull the distributor out. It's that easy. Now, down inside there, which I'm sure I can't video, but I can show you this end of it. That little rod there, it's, it's a flat on the end of the shaft and inside the engine on the oil pump there's a slot in the pump rod that this fits into. Now, it's hard to tell here but that thing is not exactly centered. So if you have this 
180 degrees out or whatever, it's not going to drop in. But I hope I paid attention to where it was because I'm going to show you dropping it back in. And this is going to turn a little bit in a clockwise direction when I get it down in there. A little bit harder to do when the engine, oh, that's why the engine's tilted and I'm trying to drop it in straight. So, you got to get this perpendicular to the engine, not the. Okay, so now it's hitting on the, the gear, I believe. to drop just a little bit more and I have it off a tooth. This is a lot easier whenever it's um, okay. Well that's in but it's not in the, the right place because and I've probably messed up the alignment of the shaft on the oil pump but you can get a great big craftsman screwdriver if necessary. And you can turn that. I don't think I have my great big craftsman screwdriver here. I think it's up at the garage. At any rate, you can take your screwdriver get it down in that shaft. I don't want to lose my screwdriver here. And you can turn it, but you need a long, long screwdriver. Able to turn it with a little light. Anyways, you want to get this about a little bit. fairly close to where it was. So once you've got that uh, oil pump shaft lined up and you have the rotor in the right position, it's easy to drop it in. Now, since I'm rebuilding this engine, I don't really care where it's at. Uh, but as I'm putting it together, what I will do is I will put number one on top dead center and I know that that rotor points about here and that's the way I'll drop it in and uh, actually there's a, a little bit more with the sniper EFI uh, that I'm putting in because I'm going to use their ignition system because it allows you to control the timing through their control unit and uh, what I will do is I will put number one at top dead center on the compression stroke, drop the distributor in, and I'll drop it in so that the, dis the rotor's pointing about here, and then that'll I mean my wires will fit for the firing order. If you put it in you really can put it in anywhere as long as you have the wires, you know, pointing at the right cylinder at the right time when they're going to fire. 
but the wires tend to be made to fit a particular firing order for the engine, especially if you buy the pre-made ones. So it's kind of nice that you follow the original layout. So I'm going to take that out and then next step is to take off the bolts that hold the intake manifold on.